Goodness gracious. My subscribers are going the wrong way. Look right here. Subscribe. Like every boxer I've ever interviewed, the way they do it, they go, okay, let me run to my car real quick. I got to run to Walgreens to do this interview. So Mike Lee, uh, now a boxing writer, NY Fights, he did a fantastic breakdown. So we're going to get two to three people to the website. Watch your breakdown. Mike, how does it feel to be a media member? And a, a YG in the boxing scene of Oakland, California. It feels good, man. It just feels good to uh, contribute in any way that I can, and um, just to uh, just be involved in the sport in any way, any capacity that I can. Perfect. Okay, so Mike Lee, Lee's Unlimited Fitness. He's got his own thing. NY Fights linked in the bio. All five or six people watching this, go click on it. Give him some views. Read about it. We're gonna jump into the fight. We're not here to. To politic, we're going to jump into this fight. What's your overview of this fight week? Not fight, fight week. What what has standed out or stood out to you in terms of what we've seen in them checking into the MGM Grand and then both of them looking like they really want to eat food yesterday at the press conference? <laughs> yes, they, they definitely looked like they were uh, aggravated and, and definitely, uh, you know, going through the process of, of making the weight. Um First thing I noticed, obviously, Errol looked a little bit more drained. I mean, he's got he's got more uh, more weight to cut, I would imagine. Um, but the tension was thick, and you know, I mean, that's what I like to see for a fight like this. It's, it was a uh, e everybody everybody is on ten right now. So um, as long as as long as everybody stays respectful, and, and you know, you mentioned the. Uh, you mentioned leading up to the fight, Terrence Crawford did a good job of, uh, you know, I think I think he did a good job at the press conference pretty much just stating that, like, you know, this is a fight week. Everybody needs to be supportive and, and, you know, all that's good, but let's let's let's, let's uh, keep everything in perspective and let's uh, keep the main thing the main thing. So I, I like that. I want to – so this is leading into one of my feet, key talking points. There seems to be a street element to this fight. There, There's over – arching themes of both families uh that care about the fighters are very tense and love the love the fighters who are fighting and basically are heckling and heckling can turn into something real quick you know one one person says one thing someone gets socked now all of a sudden someone's uncle got socked and now it's an ongoing escalating issue how do you feel about that tension that's developing is this a good um is this leading to a fun fight or is this starting to walk into an awkward area where we have to worry because i'm not blaming spence but when you start saying smoking on somebody and that's slang for killing somebody um i feel like that's already starting to instigate something amongst people in your peer group yeah yeah it, it definitely can be taken like that and um you know, uh, um, that's just the reality of the situation. Um, but, you know, like like Crawford mentioned in the press conference, you know, the people that, that are really like that, they don't have to, they don't got to be the loudest ones around. So, and it's usually unfortunate because it's usually the ones that are uh, not like that that get everything going, you know, and then everybody else has to deal with the consequences that come behind it. So, yeah, it it is a uh, it is it is a tricky situation. Uh, I would hope that everybody just keep in mind that that uh, it is a sporting event, and you know if they care about these fighters how they say they care about these fighters, you don't want to mess up these people's opportunity. This is the biggest opportunity of these guys' life, period. You know, for 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 who and what they say they are, which is a world class championship fighter, it's not going to get any bigger than this moment. So. For anybody to uh try to make the event about themselves, you know, even if they are, you know, rah rah for whoever they believe is going to win the fight, you know, just keep everything in perspective. Don't mess up. Don't mess up this opportunity for these guys. You know, that's how I look at it. I just look at it as green boxing fans because I always talk to you, your close friend of mine, Coach Derek Collinsworth, close friend, all my close friends. We're fans of everybody. I'm a fan of Spence. I'm a fan of Crawford. I can't really hate either guy because I respect the grind. I respect how they got there. I'm a fan of everybody. I'm going to take a shot right now. Are you okay? I'm going to 
take a shot. I'm taking a shot at Steven Jackson because he made a real nonsense claim saying in a way isn't good. Uh, he just has power. And that kind of shows you who's new to boxing, right? When you see someone that's riding like a sports fan, oh, you're going to go down, bud. You're going to go down. It, you see, People are, they're telling on themselves. The guys doing that, they're saying, I don't really know much about boxing. I'm just going to come out here and be real loud and belligerent. And I guess what I'm saying is this is one of the fights where my mom, she's coming over to watch the fight. My girlfriend's coming over. Everyone's excited to see this fight. And I wanted to start this show saying I really hope stupidity isn't what we remember this fight for. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this fight is this is a big fight. And and everybody that's uh not involved in boxing is gonna be have, you know, some type of uh attention paid to this fight. You know, whether you could just you don't even have to like boxing. You could just be in be somewhere and the fight's most likely gonna be being played or someone's gonna be talked about it. Um, what I really try to do my best, uh, at when, when I did that piece for New York fights was try to, because I am a fan of both guys, but I try to really just look at the, the fight for what it is and not, not very often to that, that, that fan shit, because you know, that's, that's, that's what nobody needs, bro. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, but for the record, I am a fan of both fighters. I've, uh, I've gone to Errol Spence's fights. I've been to some of his fights and, and paid good money to to, uh, to uh, be at his events and watch his fights. And I haven't gone to any of Terrence Crawford's fights, but I'm a big fan of Terrence Crawford. And I support both guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I definitely just try to keep keep it all in perspective. And I, I think that uh, too many people are uh, losing the um, the concept that you can you can like both guys. I mean, I think that's just social media, bro. Social media tells people you gotta be real loud and and stupid. Yeah, yeah. Um, but with all that, I do think that it's an opportunity for Terrence Crawford to win some more fans. Guys that are not really, uh, you know, they're not they're not they're not the, the loudest guys in boxing. You know, and this is a fight that, unfortunately, as big as this fight is, walk into your local grocery store and just ask a stranger who these guys are, and the chances are they might not know them. You know, so but what I what I'm getting at is I think I think Terrence Crawford is handling himself uh, in a in a respectful way. You know, you 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 got you got you got he he's showing Errol Spence respect, but he's also showing his confidence that he believes he's going to win. I think Errol is doing more of a job of uh kind of egging egging things on. That's what I was kind of uh, getting at is that he's kind of um instigating a little bit. I I believe so. So and, and you look at you look at both guys. And I'm just going to say this I'm I'm going to say just general if you don't know boxing, if you don't know what you're looking at between both guys and you're just looking at the personalities of both these guys throughout this week, you know, you would tend to to lean more towards Terrence Crawford. You know, he's he's more of a family guy. He's he's not really in 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 the mix like that. He's uh and he's he's shown everybody respect. Even when he's talked about Errol, he talks about Errol with respect. And Errol states that he respects uh Crawford, but I think that I think part of that is he just saying saying that to uh kind of just sell the the uh, the the fight for what it is. But I also think that he's He's showing a lot of disrespect to Terrence Crawford, um, and just 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 the whole situation. So, it's, I mean, it he's is, wearing a shirt that has Crawford's face on it in a joint, saying "Smoking on Bud" tour. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, it is good promotion. You know, it's, you got to keep everything in perspective. Like when I see the shirt, I thought it was funny. I thought it was kind of clever. You know, something to come up with. But at the same time, everything you said, it, it is a lot of deeper meaning to it, especially when you're talking about people's loved ones. You know, these these are people that got close close ties to Terrence and 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 uh you know those and Mike are... Lee, they're boxers, they come from poverty. You know, it's like it's not like oh man, I went to Texas AM, I had all these no, this is a hard knock life to be a pro boxer. So I guess what where I get sensitive about that is, and I'm a fan of Errol. You're playing with people who came up in poverty and more than likely these people that are getting loud, 
The most successful person they know is that fighter on the stage. So they're willing to live and die by the moment just to say, I love this person because that person is defining their existence. That's what's scaring me is on both sides. They have people in those scenarios. Yeah. Um, I mean, T-Mobile Center, whoever's put on the event, they need to, they need definitely to have a uh, good security in place. You know, hopefully, hopefully everything just, uh, hopefully everything just goes how it should go. You know, um, I, it is a very high chance that it could be like a Javante Davis type fight where it's usually two or three other fights going on. And it, and that could be, you know, somewhat of a, of a distraction, but you know, that's just, that's the energy of what's going on. And because everybody is wants to be involved in this fight and a lot of them don't know, they don't know boxing. They just, you know, the fight is so big that's getting covered by, by people who don't know boxing. You know, when you look at, other media outlets i mean you mentioned steven uh steven jackson which is uh he's getting into boxing but you know you gotta take his opinion with a grain of salt you know i don't even think take it with a grain of salt i think you could just kind of just glance at it and then you know okay that's cool but but even 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 not not just steven steven jackson's new you know he's he's I mean, I'm I'm new to what I'm doing, but he's he's not too far off from where I'm at. You know, he just has a bigger name and, and more notoriety. But as far as him I, getting, involved, I think you're in a different spot, bro. What I'm, I'm saying just... is, yeah, I I agree. I, I appreciate that. But what I'm saying is, he he's got he's got the platform to hop right into boxing and kind of and be noticed. You get what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, even people like Stephen A. Smith, these are other guys that don't know too much about boxing and, you know, their, their opinions, you know, that they, they have a big following and they're going to, and their following is going to go with what they're talking about. And they don't know much, you know, I've heard these guys just, this just, just, they keep talking about Errol Spence's pressure. Errol Spence is, uh, it's, it's all about Errol Spence and they, they really, even that alone is disrespectful to Crawford. You know, I think a lot of people are, uh, they're overlooking a lot, you know. They're overlooking a lot in this fight. And, uh, you know, one thing, if you if you, if you you do follow boxing, if you've seen these fights, Errol is very fundamentally sound. He does, he does what he does well. And, uh, but he always does that. And, Errol has even said, and he's had some other people close to him come out and say, well, Errol could do more. He's just never been forced to do more. Well, this is going to be a fight where he's going to be forced to do more, and we're going to see, can he do more? Because Terrence is definitely shown to be more versatile and to uh, deal with deal with things in the ring differently. And I think Errol is aware of that. I don't think he's going to admit it, but I think that all this extra, you know, all the extra that's coming with the, the promotion of this fight, I think that he's trying to bait Terrence into a, uh, into, into to coming trade to- with him. He's trying to talk trash and make him try to prove a point. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it, it's, it's going to be very, uh, very interesting to see how it plays out but um yeah it, this is going to be good to see it how versatile arrow is i will say this if arrow comes out and manages to win this fight i think i think that that could be possibly good for boxing for the perspective of this it will show that someone who does follow the fundamentals and is consistent with that can be successful I think I think that does show something, you know. But at the same time, it Terrence is gonna show that it's not all about that. You know, sometimes this is just about what you got in you. You know, yo, 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 you know, just things that can't be measured and things that can't be taught by even if you have the best trainer, trainer uh, trainers of the year or whatever the accolades are, some things just cannot be taught. I don't care who you are. So we're going to go over keys to victory right now real quickly. I'm just going to, I read your article, but my keys to victory are very simple, right? I think it's going to sound annoying. Errol Spence needs to have a good jab, establish the jab. The jab's going to allow him to set up volume. He needs to throw a lot of punches. There could be a lot of swing rounds. Spence needs to throw more. He doesn't necessarily need to land more. He needs to throw more. He needs to throw more in seven or eight rounds 
where they become swing rounds and maybe he can get those. That's the big thing I see for him. If he throws more, he can set up traps. The traps that he sets up could possibly lead to opportunities. What does Crawford need to do, in my opinion? Use the ring, lateral movement, and set up traps. So to stop the volume of Spence, in my opinion, he needs to walk him into shots. Make him start to second guess if the, that volume is good and slow the fight down. And as he's slowing it down, I think for Crawford, he needs to target Spence's body because it looks like Spence is hurting from this weight cut. So those are kind of my keys to victory to see if someone implements aspects of those to win. Mike, what do you think are the keys to victory? Um, I think it's very similar to that. I think I think for Errol, I think Errol needs to do what he always does, use his jab, apply as much pressure as he can, and start early because, you know, Terrence has been known to start slow, but that's not necessarily meaning he's going to start slow uh, tomorrow night. But Errol, Errol should try to apply pressure and uh, – but what I do think is I think Arrow Arrow is going to his best opportunity is if he could bait Terrence to fight him in the center of the ring and they just scrap and they just fight. Um, but I don't see I don't see Terrence doing that for too long. He may he may fall into it for periods of the fight, but I also think that what you said, Terrence key to victory is movement. Terrence can fight in any direction from any angle. And that that is uh even when people just say that he could switch stances, it's a lot more to just switching stances. You know, he switches stances at the right times. He does it uh, uh, very subtle at times to where people can't really catch on to, uh, you know, at the moment that he's just switched stances. He has good lateral movement. He moves good backward. Uh, a, a vulnerability for Spence. I think that if you watch both fighters, Terrence Crawford fights more off of a broken rhythm. And what I mean by that is he's constantly fainting. He's constantly moving. And that that will cause a guy to reset himself. Sean Porter does not move as, as, uh, as smoothly or as well as Terrence Crawford, but Sean Porter moves a lot. He moves a lot. And, and, uh, He's jittery at times. He can he can throw throws feints and you know he he has a different style of fighting. His feints sometimes he may lead in with his head and headbutt you, but he's still being actively moving. You know he's not being a still target for the most part. And if you watch that fight, you'll see Arrow have to respect that. And Arrow is going to want to come forward on Terrence, but I believe if Terrence is just moving, switching angles like he usually does, that's going to slow arrow down so that's going to be the key to see for me when you said sean porter i thought of r.i.p art og bob where he did the sean porter faint once had you ever seen bob throw that sean porter faint i, I don't believe i have but I, i've seen i've seen bobby uh man yes r.i.p og bob bobby's a legend he he, he could he could i wish he was here to see this fight because you already uh, remember when he showed up at the gym like just randomly he showed up and you and me were there and bob showed up and then he just didn't like spence because he goes goofy ass southpaw fighter he does he yeah he did not like spence he didn't he the uh, i mean he didn't really follow too much of spence but he wrote spence off when he found out spence was a southpaw bobby just wasn't into southpaw fighters uh but bobby loved crawford and he didn't really care that Crawford fought the softball, you know. And that's the thing about Crawford. Crawford is so special that you can overlook certain things with him. And you can't do that with everybody, you know. So, yeah, man. He feels man. like a I, guy I, I, that could have beat Floyd. Fight. Like, Terrence feels like a guy that in his prime could have given Floyd a real fight. Yeah, I I, I would agree to that. You know, it's one of those things that's always going to be, a, you know, well, it's a what if thing. But I, I do believe if anyone could have, it would have been Crawford. And, and I know everyone's heard about, you know, Spence possibly giving Floyd some problems in, in, in their sparring sessions or whatever. But, you know, if that is the case, you know, that still says something to what uh, Crawford could have possibly done with Mayweather. 
I think Crawford will show that. Um, sorry, I had an incoming call. I think Crawford will show that, you know, uh, tomorrow night. Okay, well, I'm going to just give you one more topic because I'm sure you're, you you got to get back to doing what your business is. What do you think of Derek James throwing shots at Bomac, kind of saying you need three coaches to do what I do? How did you feel about the Derek James and Bomac interaction? Because that really feels kind of personal between those two. Um, It could be. I mean, what I, what I do, Terrence said it first. From from what I heard, at least I heard it from Terrence first. Terrence said, without throwing shade on Derek, but he said my coaches never get the credit they deserve, and uh, I do think that there is some truth to that. Um, when but but with the fighter that Terrence is, and because he's so athletic and he can improvise a lot, and he does a lot of things that seem to be uncoachable. That means Bomac may not get the credit that he really truly deserves. Um, I think that they just set their team up how they set their team up. You know, you can't you can't really uh judge someone for how they they want to work as long as they're getting the, the the proper results. You know, and obviously it's not just Bomac's decision; it's Terrence's decision. Terrence is the fighter, so if Terrence wants to work with two or three trainers and they're doing it in a cohesive way where there's no uh there's no conflict, then uh it's not a problem. You know, Derek has his system. Bo Mac has his system with his team. Um, one thing I will say this, and I'm just going to bring it back to OG Bob because he, man, he gave me so much knowledge in this game of boxing. But Bobby always told me that one problem in boxing is if you get too many opinions in a corner, if you get too many people talking in the corner at one time. And uh, I don't see that from Terrence's corner. You know, he has a lot of people involved, but I don't see. I don't see conflict in the corner. I don't, I see, you know, he communicates with Bomac or whoever he needs to, but I don't see Bomac arguing with the other trainers on, on what Terrence should be doing at that given moment. So as long as that's not going on, I don't think it's a problem. Um, Derek has done I want to push, I want to push back on this. Uh -huh. Do you think it says something about Derek that maybe he doesn't want to talk to other coaches? Do you think he's maybe telling on himself that maybe his kryptonite is that he just wants to do too much himself? That, that could be. I mean, everybody works different. Some people can work with a lot of people. Some people can't. You know, um, the main thing is, is it working? And and this is going to be an opportunity to see who who's, whose method is going to work the best. One thing that I will say that I do like about the story, since you brought up the story of trainers, I will say this, I, at least to my knowledge, and I could be wrong, but to my knowledge, Bomac has been with Terrence from the start. From the beginning. I, from the beginning. And I don't, I don't believe Derek has been with Errol from the beginning. No, he jumped in. Okay. So I do think that that means something, you know, I do think that, uh, I think it means something. I think it means a lot. You know, it's it's a it's a different type of bond you have with a trainer when you take on a, a, a little boy. You know, when you train, whenever whatever time uh, Bomac started training Crawford, that's definitely a way 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 longer long shot to this moment. You know, it's it's that that's a dream. You know, I don't know where Derek came into the mix with Arrow, but it was probably more of a, a clear cut road to okay, this is what's gonna happen. Let's let's get it going. You know what I'm saying? So it takes more faith. It takes more. Uh, I think it's better. closer to like Andre and Virgil. Virgil That's came in very early on, but he wasn't like at the very day one. Okay, okay, and it, they still had a lot of success as Daryl is uh, Derek is having with Spence. Um, so this is gonna be interesting to see. But I I would like to uh, I guess I'm kind of giving up my. I would like to see Terrence and, and Bomack and those guys win this fight. You know, I I, I, I think it's a better story for the for for uh just for, for everything but we'll see i think it's kind of fun watching bo mac up there because he's like kind of like a hillbilly he's like this unlikely guy he's kind of he's a chubby big guy he's got these weird sunglasses on he's definitely not hollywood at all his speeches are just kind of all over the place kind of like a rambling uncle it's just they're kind of like the band of misfits from nebraska there's nothing inherently cool they just box they're great boxers 
And then you look at Spence, it's like Derek James, big buff guy, could probably be an actor. You look at Spence's crew, they're really cool. I think that that's one of the interesting things about this fight is not just do they fight different, they're like spiritual opposites in life, like the whole teams. Absolutely. But, you know, one thing I will say, and is, I mean, people in boxing know, but if you don't know boxing and you just see Derek James and Bo Mack in a room, and you say, who 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 out of these two guys look like they could teach you boxing? Everyone's gonna point to Derek James. He just looks he looks more like he fits the role, you know, just just off of just off of eye appeal, you know. But that's also that's that's just not knowing the situation. You know, that's Bo Mac is, you know, those guys come from a different uh, place in the country and you know they got their own type of way of doing things, you know, just like Derek comes from Texas or wherever he's from, they got their own way of doing things. But um it's definitely gonna be interesting to see, man. I, I, I think, I think, I don't, I don't, I don't see Bo Mack as being a bad trainer. You know, you can't, you cannot knock him until he's a great like, coach, bro. Exactly, exactly. But we'll see. Even after this fight, he may not, he may never get the credit he deserves. Would Bo Mack ever be trainer of the year? I Should be if he wins this year, in my opinion. Because if you beat the guy that people are saying is the trainer of the year, what? What more do you have to do? But I think that, I hate to say it, but I think perception is reality, right? It's favoritism. So that people don't just want to look at results. They also want to look at, does this coach fit the mold? And if you don't fit the mold, then I think people look for reasons to not give you full credit. Well, when it's all said and done, Bomag may never get trainer of the year. But if Bud goes out here, wins this fight like he's, like I believe he will, Bo Mack can say he's trainer of the career because he's been with Bud from the beginning. So, you know, trainer of the year or trainer of the career, I'd rather be trainer of the career. You know, you, that don't come with accolades and trophies, but, you know, the real ones will know what that means. Well, I, I respect the fact that you got Coach Red Spikes, you got SAU, the other coach. I think it speaks to some humility to be able to defer amongst coaches and to – to know that he maybe can't do it all on his own. I think that there's a level in boxing where how many times do you see coaches trying to overextend themselves and hurt a fighter? I think that it's actually like really respectable that he breaks up things. Absolutely. It, and it does, it does show humility. You know, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a few things that, uh, that just any man's not going to want to admit that another man could do better than him. And, and, and when it comes to combat and things like that, that's one of them, you know? So for him to just, you know, know when to take a step down, if he needs to, you know, that, that does say a lot. And, and, and it does, it seems that they have a better system, you know, but we'll see. We will see. You know, final it, it thoughts. All... I want you to give us a final thoughts on this. Like, what is this everything that you wanted from this fight? Is this everything you were expecting right now? Is there anything that's missing? We're about 28, 29 hours out whenever this goes up. Uh, is this what you wanted? Pretty much. I mean, what, what I want is to see the fight. So all this is good. And it, does, it, it like I said, it gets me fired up. You know, I'm excited for this fight. But at the same time, Let's keep the main thing the main thing. Let's get to the fight. Let's not have no unnecessary drama or, or you know, no BS before the fight. No Let's rappers instigating stuff with boxers. It, yeah, yeah. We've already seen how that turns out. But, yeah. Anyways, we want to see we want to see a good a good legendary fight. And I believe that this has everything that it needs to be that. Hopefully, everything, you know, on the outside allows it to be that because if it's just between Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford I believe we're gonna have all that we need from from the fight what do you think the atmosphere is gonna be when that first bell rings it's gonna be tense man it's gonna be tense it's gonna be uh you know at, at any fight you know it's it's a different type of energy you know you, you go to a fight and then you go to a football or basketball game it's just a different energy in the crowd everybody is walking around with that that kind of chip on their shoulder you know, and, and saying a lot of the fans, they they get to, I don't know, they get to feeling like they're looking at their fighter and they're getting inspired and they start to believe they could go 
do some shit or 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 uh, challenge somebody, you know, even if they're not nowhere close to that level. But um, everybody just needs to keep everything in perspective. It's gonna be exciting, but just be respectful, you know. At the end of the day, just be respectful. I think Terrence, again, to Terrence Crawford's credit, he's showing respect, and that says a lot because usually the most dangerous guys are the most respectful because they they demand respect come back to them and they know what's going to happen if it doesn't, you know? So we're going to see. I'm excited, man. I also want to say before I get you out of here, guys, tune in on this undercard. We got a great co-main event feature. Isaac Cruz taking on a friend of the program, Giovanni Cabrera. That's a possible upset fight because Cabrera can beat Isaac Cruz just because you don't know who he is. Doesn't mean he's not good. And then Nonito Donair at 40, almost 41 years old, taking on Alexandro Santiago. That's a pretty close fight, too. I get Nonito's Hall of Famer, but when you're 41, all of a sudden fights get a lot harder. So don't just tune into this main event. Please support these fighters on the undercard. Absolutely. It's good to have Oakland, California in the house. You know, shout out to Nonito and, and, and his people. Uh, you know, that's always good to have us represented, you know, on, on the cards. So I'm excited for it all, man. Everybody needs to tune in. Do you think Nonito gets it done? I'm cheering for him. You know, my guy Baz is going to be in the corner. I'm always cheering for Nonito. But, I, you know, I'm the keep it real police. Sometimes fighters get mad at me, but I can't lie to my audience. You know, we're trying to grow this channel, get big guests. I can't lie to people because if I lie, people know I'm lying. And I don't got that following to lie to people. I got to keep it real so the followers come. I mean, Nonito is, he's getting up there in age, you know, but, you know, I, I would hope that he will win. You know, he's been through a lot. He's had a, a long career. But, um, you know, if I'm not mistaken, I think, did Nonito come up around the time that Andre came up or was he before Andre? I think he was a little before. So that's what I'm saying. You know, Andre, Andre's come and gone. You know, he's, he's, he's completed his career already. For Nonito's a moment, five. like six years, I want to say. How long has Dre been out? Like, four or five years getting there yeah so you know uh that just goes to show that nonito's had a very long career and this sport of all sports it don't last forever but i hope the best for him i hope for success and then, like i said it's just always good to support to support oakland you know and then your final prediction you picked crawford we're going to we're going to drag this out for the, all the monetized people i know you're you're pulling your teeth because you got something something going on but Last, last thing. Give us the prediction. How does the fight end? I'm about, I'm about to be polarized, but I think I, I say Crawford gonna knock Spence out. We'll, we'll pick a round. That I'm unsure of. That I'm unsure of, but I, I definitely early, think middle, late. Middle. How I, does, I, I, how does he do it? Like, what's the, what's the type of exchange you foresee happening? Is it a like? What do you see? I I see him. I see him trapping. I see him trapping Spence in, into a counter shot and hurting him. And 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 Crawford knows how to how to end a fight when he's got somebody hurt. Um, you know, everyone talks about the power of, of what Spence can do, and and I get that. But uh, Crawford Crawford handles the business. Proper ends fights. You know, one thing, if you want to just look at the two fights that these guys have had similar, Kell Brook and Sean Porter. Spence was in the ring way longer with both of those guys than Crawford was. So, so I'm going to give my prediction, and then we're going to hit the end button, and we're going to go back to working full time jobs, which is really fun. And I'm sure we're both excited to do that. Um, I will go, just to be controversial, I'll go Spence. And I'm going to say it's a split decision, and I see the fight playing out like how Canelo Golovkin number two played out, where I think a lot of people thought Golovkin won. Some people thought uh, Canelo won. I think this is going to be a fight that comes down to the swing rounds. I'm really, if I'm a fan of Crawford, I'm really, really nervous about the volume of Errol Spence because I think that he's going to get rewarded a lot for throwing punches. So my initial feeling is I think Spence is going to narrowly edge this based on the judges. Let's see it. Everybody tune in.
Everybody tune in. Boxing experts are split. Thank you, Mike. We're going to probably get you on to promote your articles. Go to New York fights. Wait, what's the website? NYfights.com. What's your article, Mike Lee? It's a uh, keys to victory for uh, Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. Like I said, I try to be as unbiased as possible. I know I just told you what I think is going to happen in the fight, but still go check it out because I, I do lay out a good, uh, a good case for both fighters.